Yeah. We had a Roderick Strong segment with Adam Cole, where Adam Cole, he goes, I'm just I'm just messing with this guy. I don't, know, I don't trust him at all. And, uh, and Roderick Strong goes, dude, what if he watches this back? And Cole goes, he ain't going to watch this back. So then MJF shows up. All He's all excited. And the first thing MJF is, says, I ain't going to sit around here to watch a wrestling show. Let's go party. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he goes to get in the car, and Cole tells Roderick, there's no way he's watching this back. So he goes to party, and Roderick just shakes his head. Jungle Boy came out. What, his... what, if, what if somebody tells him? Well, somebody might. I mean, he doesn't need to watch the show. He could have somebody tell him. Well, I think in storyline, he's got no friends. So. He's got no friends? No. Yeah. I don't I mean, think like so. No, nobody who watches this show might. I don't know what, who's MGF's don't, friend. I don't know, but he's the world champion. Don't people like kiss up to the world champion, and try to be friends? Not with around him? here. They all hate the guy. It's a storyline. It, well, I mean, aren't there like, you know, like whatever? And, okay. All Jungle right. Boy comes out for his first heel promo here, yeah. and uh, I think he did overall a pretty good job. It's, I mean, uh, still, it's his first one. I mean, the people the people booed him. Um, he's got a ways to go, but he did way better here than he was doing as a babyface. I will say that. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's it's just I. He's just not that comfortable in promos yet. No, he wore he wore um, the his jacket, father's jacket. His father's jacket. Yeah, yeah. So, so the fans go. chanted, "You fucked up, an asshole," and he blamed Taz, and he said, "Man, if I see that hook again, I'm gonna beat the shit out of that guy." So Hook's music immediately hits, and Jungle Boy goes running, and Hook goes sprinting, and Hook chases him all the way backstage, and, you know, Taz is like, this guy's going to get his ass killed. Let's get a camera back there. So eventually they get a camera back there, and uh, Jungle Boy goes running, and he goes, start the he, car, and they've got this SUV. dives into the car. He did this dive. I, it would have been funny if they should have the other door open, he should have dived and just <laughs> well, all the way out the other side. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. But uh, no, he dove into this thing, and the thing took off, and, and Hook was pissed off. And yeah, I mean, he, you know, he cut a heel, basic heel promo. He buried the fans, talked about how he was banging the hottest bitch in this place, he said. Did you hear the backstory on that one? He, so he said that, right? Yeah. And, so Kyle Fletcher then said that uh, no, you're not, basically. Mm. Yeah. Well. So we I guess maybe we they could, can have a match. We could have a debate on on who the the what the hottest bitch is. That's is what that that's what he said. That's not that what I words. said. That's what he's not said. my word. Not my words either. Yes. So Britt was sick, and so Ruby Soho faced Alexi Nicole, and of course she beat her quickly, and then Ruby cut a promo afterwards. Which apparently, if you were in the building, they never told you that Britt was not on the show or that she right. was sick. So nobody knew until after this match was over. So, like, they were chanting DMD during the match, thinking she was going to come out. So Britt did a promo, making it, or uh, Ruby did a promo, making it clear she was sick and vomiting. And next week, she's going to take her opportunity to be the two time Owen Hart Cup winner. And she'd leave her exactly what she is now nothing. And off she goes. And then, uh, main event. Painmaker Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara against Sting and Darby Allen. So uh, this was better than a pay-per-view match, although once again, Sting almost killed himself. And this this was one of those things where you saw this one coming because what happened was they're running wild and Sammy and Sting start setting up two tables outside. And the table that, that uh, Darby is trying to set up, the leg breaks, and, you know, Taz and the other announcers are like, don't set this table up. You need to get another table. Like, that leg's just going to collapse. But Darby set it up anyway. And then Sting sets up a second table. And so you've got these two tables outside. And then they put Sammy on the table. And Darby gets in the ring. He sets up this ladder. And as soon as he sets up the ladder, the announcers are like, dude, those tables are way too far away. You ain't going to make it. And so he starts climbing. And then Sting starts climbing up the other side. And Darby looks at Sting, and he, he points at him, and Sting goes, uh-huh. So Darby goes, all right, it's your dive. So this this 65-year-old guy. 64, 64. 64. That's close enough. Yeah. He climbs up on this ladder, and it's so far away. I thought, oh, my God. But I will say, to his credit, he for a 64-year-old guy, that guy jumped so far. He did, he did. But he still only made it to half of the first table. And he he broke the table, and he put Sammy through the table. 
But he also hit his face on Sammy's knee. He split his lip open. He said his tooth was half knocked out, which means it's pretty much all the way knocked out. And, man, they went over and checked on this guy, and he was just like, you know, he's bleeding. But he had to get back in the ring. And so he ends up rising from the dead. He's bleeding from the face. And uh, him and Jericho go back and forth, and they're kicking out of spots, and they're avoiding spots. And finally, Sting avoids a Judas effect, hits a death drop. Jericho kicks out. Sting puts him in the scorpion, submits him, and then he collapses. I'm like, man, dude. This guy, when he first showed up, it was like, you're only going to do cinematic matches. We're going to tape these matches. You know, we'll have crash pads. We'll have whatever. He does one, and it's good. And then it's like, you know, I could probably do a match every now and then, a tag. Well, now this guy's out there doing all this crazy stuff every single match. And not only that... That Forbidden Door thing happened. You know what that guy did? He flew home. Yeah. And then he flew back. Everybody else stayed there. This guy flew home, flew back, which means, you know, he had two long flights, 18 hours at most at home or whatever. And then he comes back and he does this and, oh, my God. This guy's a madman is what he is. You know, it's it's one of the things that's, you know, again, all the stunts, the, the overuse of the stunts, because... Again, like years ago, something like this, we would talk about for a month. You know what I mean? Like, but the thing is, it's it's so overdone that it's not. It's it's stuff that you do. It hurts. It's dangerous, and people forget about it. The next day, they don't even care. And see, that's the, which is the problem. You know, you've desensitized people and you overdone it. So it's like it's you know it's impressive, but everyone does it. But for these older guys like Sting and Jeff Hardy, who are out there mentally for whatever reason they have, trying to prove that they belong and whatever they're trying to prove, because obviously Sting doesn't have to do this to get over, and nor does Jeff Hardy, but they do it, and you know it's like, um, man, you know. When you're when you're past a certain age, you probably shouldn't be doing this stuff too much. Um, you shouldn't be doing that dive at any age. The one they did here today. Well, we have guys who who do that dive, you know, and even more. I mean, in the sense of there there are some Darby probably would have done it off the top of the ladder instead of you know halfway up. God damn! If he would have gone off the top of the ladder, he might have made it. Well, he might, <laughs> might have been part of the problem. Well, Darby would have made it. You know, presumably that was a long way away, dude. That was a yeah. long way. Yeah, but away. I, but I, but we've seen we've seen guys, you know, um, you know, in WWE, you know, go off the turnbuckle to table pretty far away, just you know, the same way. I mean, it was far, and um, they should have moved it up closer, and and he almost got there, but you know, there you go. But man, you know, it's like Sting's done. You know, Sting. It's not even the first time he's done this. I mean, he, it's the first time he did this exact one. But he's done a lot of stuff in the last year, and it's just like, man, you don't have to do this. Six, I mean, it just, I just can't even fathom doing stuff like that at at his age when, you know, it's like, it's like he's he's got guaranteed money anyway. I mean, it's like, it's I I don't know, it, you know, again, like there's like nobody there that's gonna say, oh, you know you know, anything bad about Sting because most of those guys grew up with Sting as this big superstar, so he's got, you know, a big aura about him. It's not like, you know, I don't know. I mean, even, you know, I mean, then again, Terry Funk did the same thing when he was, but he didn't do it when he was 64. Terry Funk was in his mid-50s when he would do the moonsaults and the crazy stuff, so. Well, it was a hell of a match other than that. I thought it was a good main event, and uh, that was the Dynamite Show. I'm at a Father's Day retreat we were going to go camping today, but uh, suffice to say, the weather was not uh, suitable for camping with these two youngsters, and so we rented this cabin here instead. Bug. God damn it. Eat it. Sorry. Eat it. I'm going to eat it. That happened last time. I swallowed a bug. I hope God. it was a big one. Ah! Mm. My wife is asking what happened. And, and you explain. a bug. Come on in, Pace. Why don't you come say hi to everybody? What is all over your face? Oh my god, that's my child! Hey, Hannah, come in here, say hi to everybody! Do you got s'mores all over your face, kid? Why don't you come over here and say hi? What do you want to say? No. Yeah, I don't know either. Get out of here. All right, well, that was fun. Hey, listen, we're going to be back on Tuesday, NWA TNA Episode 1. Right, Hannah?
<laughs> She's acting like a child. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. Yes, Faze? Uh-oh. Okay, get out of here. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.